On this edition of EDR Tech, we're going to be going over the Bosch CDR500 flex ray adapter. What it is, why it's used, and how to use it. The CDR500 flex ray adapter was introduced in 2014 and there's still some confusion about its purpose and use. A couple common questions that get asked are, do I still need to use the CDR500 flex ray adapter if I have a CDR900? The short answer is yes. The CDR500 is an adapter that facilitates communication between the CDR interface modules and certain vehicle modules. Like the commonly used ACM adapter or DLC adapters, the CDR500 is an adapter used in conjunction with the interface modules to perform a download. Another commonly asked question is, what is FlexRay? Well, FlexRay is a high-speed communication protocol that differs from the CAN communication protocol that's used by many auto manufacturers. A communication protocol is basically a computer language that allows different systems in a vehicle to communicate with each other. FlexRay was developed to offer a much faster and more reliable form of communication for more advanced digital, technologically advanced systems being added to some higher end vehicles. Throttle by wire, brake by wire, and other integrated systems, including airbag modules, needed more minute, time sensitive communication than the CAN protocol could deliver. Milliseconds matter, and FlexRay provides much faster trigger response in these systems. FlexRay also has 20 times higher bandwidth than CAN, allowing for faster communication between multiple systems. BMW and Mini first started utilizing FlexRay in some of their vehicles, starting with 2014 models. Since then, the use of FlexRay has steadily increased, primarily with European auto manufacturers. Audi, Volvo, Mercedes, and even Toyota now produce vehicles that utilize the FlexRay protocol. You can see on this FlexRay coverage chart, starting around 2017, 2018, the majority of vehicles made by Audi, BMW, and Volvo now utilize the FlexRay protocol. The Bosch CDR interface modules are not capable of communicating directly with a vehicle module that utilizes the FlexRay protocol. Therefore, Bosch had to develop an adapter that could facilitate this communication. And that adapter is the CDR500 FlexRay adapter. The CDR500 acts like a vehicle gateway and simulates FlexRay nodes to establish communication between the CDR interface module and a FlexRay vehicle module. Essentially, the CDR500 converts CAN to FlexRay and FlexRay to CAN. One thing to know, the CDR500 adapter is only required for direct to module downloads as called for in the CDR help file. It is not required if you're able to perform a DLC download in a vehicle that utilizes the FlexRay protocol. If the CDR500 is required for a download, it'll be called out in the vehicle cable lookup section of the CDR help file. Here's an example with this 2019 BMW 3 Series. We'll focus on the D2M or Direct to Module Connect column as again, the CDR500 is only required for direct to module downloads. This column indicates what cables and adapters are required for the download. This symbol is indicative of the CDR500 FlexRay adapter. If you see this symbol, you'll need the CDR500. The symbol itself is a hyperlink that will take you to a connection diagram showing how to connect all of the necessary equipment for a D2M download. This vehicle can use either the CAN Plus or the CDR900 as indicated here. If using the CAN Plus, the necessary cable and adapters are shown here and here if you're using the CDR900. Let's take a closer look at the CDR500 itself. When purchased, the CDR500 comes with two connection cables, one being the USB cable. This cable is used to connect the CDR500 to your computer during firmware updates. The USB cable is not used when performing an EDR data download. The other cable is used to connect the CDR500 to either the CAN Plus or CDR900 interface modules, and I'll show you that connection process in just a bit. One end contains various ports, indicator lights, and switches, most of which are not utilized for CDR functions. The LAN port, SD card slot, and USB-A port are not used by CDR, so you don't need to concern yourself with those. The USB-B port is used to connect the CDR500 to your computer only when performing firmware updates, and again, we'll go over that in more detail in just a bit. There are eight small indicator lights. Some of these lights will illuminate during different processes when performing a download, and we'll discuss that in a bit also. There are two small slide switches on the device, 
Again, these don't affect CDR functions. They can be in any position and will not affect either a download or a firmware update. And lastly, there's a power supply socket that is not used for CDR functions as well. On the other end of the device, you'll see two multi-pin connectors labeled X1 and X2. The X1 port is used to connect the CDR500 to either of the CDR interface modules, CAN Plus or CDR900, and the X2 port is where you connect the direct to module connection cable you're using to perform a download. The CDR500 requires occasional firmware updates. The updates are built into certain versions of the CDR software program, and you'll be prompted to perform the update when you install a version of CDR that contains a CDR500 update. The update must be performed prior to beginning a Flexray ACM download. Now if you start a download and a firmware update is required, the software will prompt you to perform the update before allowing you to proceed with the download. So it's a good practice to perform the update when prompted during the CDR software install, therefore eliminating the need to do it when you're in the field. You'll need to use either the CAN Plus or the CDR900 to perform a CDR500 firmware update. Either will work just fine. You'll also need your computer with the latest activated version of CDR software. Now your computer must have two USB ports. Use of a multi-port USB hub that plugs into a single USB port on your computer will not work. You'll need the USB cables for both the CDR500 and the CDR interface module you're using. You'll need the CDR500 interface connection cable and some other adapters that are specific to the interface module you're using as well. And lastly, you'll need the CDR AC power supply. Connection diagrams and instructions are contained in the CDR software help file. Open the CDR software program and an easy way to get there is click on the setup tab. Hover over Program CDR Devices and click on Connection Help. Scroll down and click on Connect the CDR500 Adapter. Here you'll find two connection diagrams. One if you're using the CAN Plus interface module and another if you're using the CDR900. Again, either interface module can be used to perform the CDR500 firmware update. Pay special attention to this note. Do not have a direct module cable connected to the CDR500 during a firmware update. If you have a direct module cable connected and plugged into an ACM, you'll add an ignition cycle to the ACM once the system is powered up for the firmware update. So make sure a D2M cable isn't connected to the CDR500 adapter when performing a firmware update. Now let's go over the connection process to perform the update using the CAM Plus interface module. When using the CAM Plus module, you'll also need the ACM adapter. It's part number F00K108387 and is commonly referred to as the 387 or ACM adapter. I just followed the connection diagram from the help file. Now there's no particular order to make the connections spelled out in the help file, but I'd recommend connecting the power supply last. I've connected the CAN Plus USB cable to the CAN Plus module and my computer is indicated. The ACM adapter connects to the CAN Plus module as well. The CDR500 interface cable connects to the ACM adapter on one end and to the X1 port on the CDR500. Now you'll notice that the cable won't mate with the X2 port on the CDR500, so there's really no way to mess this up. I then connected the CDR500 USB cable to the port on the opposite end of the CDR500 and plug the other end into a USB port on my computer. Now here's why we need two USB ports to perform the update. Lastly, power the components with the AC power supply and as always, whenever using the ACM adapter, power is supplied to the socket on the ACM adapter, not to the CAM Plus module. We're all set to start the firmware update, but before we do, Let's go over the connection process if using the CDR900 since the update process is the same with either interface. Again, I'll refer to the diagram in the help file. I've connected the CDR900 USB cable to the CDR900 on one end and to my computer on the other. Now you can use the CDR900's wireless feature in place of the USB cable if you have it set up that way. I've just used the hardwire USB connection. I've connected the legacy cable adapter into the CDR900 main interface power cable as shown on the diagram. The legacy cable adapter is a standard accessory that comes with the CDR900. 
The CDR500 interface cable connects to the legacy cable adapter on one end and to the X1 port on the CDR500 on the other end. The CDR500 USB cable is connected to the CDR500 and to a USB port on my computer. And lastly, the CDR power supply connects to the power socket on the CDR900 power cable. Okay, regardless of which interface module you're using, the CDR500 firmware update process is the same. The update is built into the CDR software program and you don't need internet access to perform the update. Open the CDR software program on your computer and click on the Setup tab. Hover over Program CDR Devices and click on Program CDR500 Adapter. Just follow the on-screen prompts to perform the update. One thing of note, a warning window will appear advising you not to remove power or disconnect the CDR500 device during the update. Doing so will result in damage to the CDR500. A window will appear when the update is complete and now you're all set. The CDR500 has been updated and it's ready for use. The connection process to perform a download using the CDR500 is basically the same, only adding the direct to module connection cable as called for in the CDR help file. Again, there's a connection diagram in the help file. Just click on the FlexRay symbol in the vehicle cable lookup section. There are currently six FlexRay direct to module cables. These six cables differ from all the other Bosch cables as the connector is specifically designed to fit into the X2 port on the CDR500. So connect the direct to module cable to the X2 port and then to the ACM you're working with. And at this point, performing the download is the same as any other. Start a new file, enter all the required information, and click on the airbag icon. Some of the indicator lights on the CDR500 will change during the download process, so let's go over them. None of the lights will illuminate until you actually click on the collect data or airbag icon to start the download. A few seconds after you click on that, the left side LAN port light and the number one and number four lights will illuminate on the CDR500 indicating the device is waiting for communication with the ACM. The number two and number five lights will flash during the communication exchange between the CDR interface module, the CDR500, and the ACM you're working with. The lights will all turn off after the download is complete and the save data dialog box is displayed on your computer. If there was a problem, an error message may appear on your computer. The error messages typically relate to connection issues and will refer you back to the connection diagram. If you've verified all the connections and you're still having issues, I'd suggest you contact Bosch CDR Technical Support for further assistance and they can assist you with diagnosing the issue. Again, use of the FlexRay protocol has really expanded over the past couple years and is going to continue to expand. The current FlexRay coverage chart we showed earlier can be found on our website. Just go to crashdatagroup.com and once you're there, hover over the Support tab. Click on Bosch CDR Tool under Documents and Downloads and then click on CDR500 Vehicle Support Guide. We also have a couple tutorial videos specific to the CDR500 on our YouTube channel. Hover over Support, click on YouTube Channel under Social Media, and there you can find a detailed video on how to perform a firmware update and how to perform a direct to module download using the CDR500. And that's it for this edition of EDR Tech. If there's a topic you'd like to see covered on a future edition, please let us know. Also, click on the subscribe button to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be advised when next month's edition has been posted. And as always, if you have any questions at all about any of the EDR retrieval tools, Bosch, Hyundai, Kia, or Tesla, just give us a call or go to crashdatagroup.com.